Greetings, John Tiller Software, Panzer Campaigns players, to my discussion on map reading and movement. Why a discussion on movement? Because if you are new to the Panzer Campaigns series, you will no doubt do it badly and will lose many games because of poor movement technique. Uh, and you'll either give it away or you will learn from your defeats and eventually master it down the track. So a little time spent analysing movement could pay big dividends if you're new to the series. The map you are looking at is from the Bulge 44 module and anyone who's played the German side in the Ardennes offensive will know that half the battle for the German side is getting your troops efficiently through the forested region. So this is a good backdrop to examine movement factors. A quick review of the basics of movement. You should all know by now there are two main modes of movement. One is deployed, that is when it's not in travel or rail mode, and the other most common uh, form of movement is in travel mode. That is indicated by a T after the movement factor and also a white line at the bottom of the unit icon. It is good to know the colour coding of the movement factor, particularly uh, when the movement factor turns to yellow. This indicates this will be your uh, last chance to change from travel mode to deployed mode in this turn. Now this can be very important for artillery setup and for other miscellaneous reasons we'll discuss later. Bridges are always an important military consideration, so you should be able to recognise the three different types of bridges uh, immediately when looking at the map. In brief, uh, the only bridge that tracked vehicles can cross is a heavy bridge. Engineers also play a crucial role in water crossings. Another source of terrain information is the terrain information panel which is located by default in the upper left. Right clicking on the panel provides the hex side information and this is where the bridge detail is located. There are five types of ground conditions that is normal, soft, mud, snow and frozen. Now if this is your first expedition to the snow, keep a close look out for square brackets around the terrain factor because field and marsh terrain is treated as clear in frozen conditions and swamp terrain is treated as forest. So these will have significant effects on your movement. So let's have a look at the parameter value by pressing F4 and then scrolling down to bridges or bridge values. The bridge value initially is the percentage chance that an engineer unit will build a bridge in that turn. The pontoon value is the amount of turns it takes to build a pontoon bridge and the last section, the bridge strength, is the value that uh, the engineer unit needs to defeat to destroy a bridge. Right, we will keep scrolling past the bridge factors and we get eventually to the movement costs for the different types of units, foot, ski, bicycle, horse, motorcycle, motorised, blah blah. So the rest of them are all there and that's the movement cost in normal terrain. But it's important at this stage to keep going to get to the movement modifiers. 
So for snow conditions, for foot for instance, it's 120% and in frozen it's 150. So it is important to understand that different units and different terrain will be modified by the conditions of the ground. And that information can be found via the parameter data. Also it might be worth noting here are the movement modifier. Movement elevation modifier is 10 movement points per 100 meters. So if you cannot uh, move that extra hex, that can sometimes be caused by a change in elevation. So check your contours. To check uh, for this information on the map, you'll need to toggle your units on and off. This can be achieved by the toggle units button. Or by going to view units off. At the start of each turn, it's a good idea to go to Info and Weather. So current weather, snow conditions, visibility, 2 kilometers or 2 hexes. So if we have a look at the map, you can see we start over here, we've got a nice heavy bridge here so we can get our track vehicles over, then we get to this secondary or medium bridge, another medium bridge, in fact all through this sector it's like medium bridges. So these are going to be issues initially for our heavy vehicles to get through. So at first glance you may think we need to get the uh, engineers out and construct some bridges and that's uh, worth consideration as well particularly at this location here where it goes over the rivers so this is not meant to be a DAR but an investigation into map reading and movement but for those who are interested in this is the Bulge 44 Gold module and the scenario is the race for Bastone, 1801. So let's start our investigation of movement with the basics uh, with this engineer unit. You see that he is motorised on a secondary road. So motorised secondary road, it's 200% in snow conditions. So to move one hex we would expect it to cost 10 movement points. Fifty, forty, fifteen. So why the extra five movement points? Well I'm sure many of you would have noticed that we have moved from 450 meters up to 500 meters so it's five movement points per 50 meters currently our engineer unit has 25 transport points left and the font is in yellow so if we wanted we could change the engineer unit back to deployed status but let's uh, move down the road. So with 25 transport points left we would expect to move two hexes or two kilometers. Five transport points left so that works as advertised. The headquarters unit. Notice that the fonts in yellow meaning that he's on foot. So he's on foot, we're on a secondary road. So what happens if we move him? 
Well, you may think on a secondary road, it might cost us, or is it a primary road, correction. You may think it might cost us uh, four or five points. So let's see what happens. So we're going from 28 to 21. So it cost us seven movement points. Well, I'm sure many of you realize when we are in deployed mode, the movement is as if the road wasn't there. So in fact, we were moving into a clear terrain or a clear hex. And clear is at seven movement points. So to prove the concept, on 21, we move one more hex to a clear hex. And it costs us seven. We now move the headquarters unit back to transport. Notice how the movement now has changed from foot to motorized. So motorized unit on a primary road. We're forecasting eight. Let's see what we get. 54 to 50. Right, so when we run transport mode in a motorized transport, it would appear it uh, costs us and 100%, not the snow rate. So that's interesting. So headquarters unit will now move him into this road hex here. It's the same height, 450 to 450. So how much do you think it'll cost us to move? We're at 50 and we go to 40. Of course, because we've moved on a secondary to a secondary hex so that costs us 10 so that's a little confusing isn't it so we go another hex on the secondary road in transport mode and it costs us 10 right so the next hex is a village hex now a village for motorized costs 60, so that is very expensive. Our headquarters unit only has 30 left. So do you think we'll be able to move in one more hex? Right, yeah, so because the road was there, we move by the road rate, not the village rate. So that's very interesting as well. So we've got 20 transport points left. And we're able to move two more secondary road hexes. So, so far quite interesting. So let's look at this chap here. Now I don't have the uh, tracked detail, but this guy's on foot. So you'd expect there to be not really too many problems. Except for crossing bridges you need to be in transport mode. So now we've got 66 transport points. So we're moving on a secondary road once again. This guy's a hard half track. Not motorized, it has its own category. 
So of course there's at least one point to move across the bridge. So let's have a look. 66 points on this side of the bridge to move to the other side in a half hard half track. It costs us 66 transport points. So why is it so? So if we go F4, So let's go th right down the bottom first to confirm what is the rate rate for hard half track in snow conditions. 130. Now here's hard half track. So we're on a secondary road, five movement points. We're crossing a medium bridge, light bridge, medium bridge, it only costs you one point. And Now a forest costs us 45 movement points. Now if we multiply that by 1.3, what do we get? Good question. A forest hex at 130% should cost 58.5 movement points. A secondary is five. Five by one point three is six point five. So if we add all those up, that should account for the sixty six movement points. Now I think this could be a wrinkle in the programming, and I suspect that the program thinks the unit is assaulting across the bridge in transport mode because that would come close to that total. But I don't know. Obviously it needs a bit more investigation because it seems to me there's a couple of issues there. One is that on the secondary road it shouldn't be costing 66 transport points. And secondly, this is a hard half track, which I would think would be under the category of an armoured vehicle. And as such, can an armoured vehicle cross that medium bridge? Now perhaps the situation might be that armoured personnel carriers can cross these bridges. And that's a decision that's been made by the developers, but I think we've found a bit of a wrinkle here in the code. Right, so moving along, let's have a look at this engineer unit. He's in transport mode. He's a hard half track. He's also a hard target. the same as our infantry uh, half-track that just went across. So both these vehicles are the same. Six. So we've got 60 transport points. Six less 
than the chap who went across before us. So this guy's got 230 men. Now we know from the parameters that we can use transport up to 350 men. This guy has got 180 men. 230. That takes us to 310, 410, doesn't it? So we would be over that transport limit. But I suspect we won't be able to move across this bridge because it thinks we're assaulting, as we've previously discussed. Right, so let's uh, look at some tracked vehicles. Ah, here we go, we have a, a Panther unit. A hard target tracked. So these guys definitely cannot go over medium bridges. So we can move him to here uh, on a secondary road in transport mode. We're expecting about six. So let's see how we go from 85 to 79. Beautiful. So we're going to cross a bridge. So it'll be one point for the bridge and one point and the uh, six points. So it should cost us seven. 73. So it only cost us six. So that's interesting as well. So at this stage, we know that if we go one more hex, even if we get to this medium bridge, we shouldn't be able to cross it. So we're in this location here. And at this stage, sometimes as a player, you sort of get a bit tunnel visioned. Well, maybe I should say, myself as a player, I get tunnel visioned and think that I have to cross this bridge. Bring up engineers and do all sorts of silliness and build a bridge and go through the agony of all that. But of course, if we pull the right stick, we can see there's a clear hex along the railway line to our right hand side. And we have just crossed the river. And these features along here are streams. And as we know from streams, they do cost us a bit to cross, as in about 23 points. But nonetheless, we can cross them. So let's have a look. select our unit and there we go we can actually cross get to our stream we're up to 59 transport points now our problem here is we have to cross the stream into a forest hex now the forest hex costs us 46 by itself and the stream then is 23.4 so we just, even at 59, we don't have enough. Uh, can we move into this one here, say? So there we go. We can move into that forest hex. So on the next turn, we can move across this stream into that next section with our tracked unit. So just watch for that. Sometimes you can get tunnel vision and you miss the obvious opportunity. So let's grab this chap here. He's got 72 movement points. A Stug G, 3G. Uh, back here we've got the two, two vehicles as well. So let's move those across as an exercise and we'll see what happens. Obviously tracked hard target. We move on to the secondary road in transport mode. Wow, that costs us 72 to 26. Oops. 
so we go 26 to 20 20 to 14 so we should be able to cross still got eight so we're able to cross and we're away So we have the Panther unit. And uh, Yanged Panzer 4. So at this stage we could go ballistic with these guys and run them to the road here and see if we can get them across. But being patient players and knowing our movement values and the value of map reading we toggle the units off and notice that the hex next to us is a clear hex. So to move into a clear hex will cost us 7 as opposed to moving into a forest hex which will cost us 46. So let's move these guys. First off we'll move this chap here, we move him into a clear hex. We move him into the secondary road. And then we And there we go, so we get him all the way up to this stream. Now this chap here. Once again, tracked, hard target. So let's say we got a bit uh, impatient, we, uh, we want action, all that sort of stuff. If we move to our forest hex, move to the road. In fact, okay, we can move to the road there. And that's as far as we get him, and we've still got to get through all that traffic, etc. So just by noticing the fact that there was a clear hex next door and it saved us all those movement points is the difference from being up here as opposed to being here against this stream and ready to cross over to this next section in the next move. So a little bit of elementary uh, map reading and knowing your transport values. Now I was going to talk about a few other things but time is sort of getting away from us a little bit. Uh, but I'll do one more. I mentioned in my previous videos about using uh, your recon units and how they're a uh, very valuable tool. And they can bump along uh, formations and find out where all the enemy units are. Now sometimes in my excitement I uh, move a little bit too quickly but so I'll show you the correct technique right here so I've put him in transport mode so this way we can have more moves we get more information at the cost of perhaps being blasted so we'll see how we travel okay we got shot up and we get fatigued fatigue okay so all we scored at this stage is fatigue so with our reconnaissance unit next to these guys, one, we can check who they are. Okay, he's in a clear hex, uh, looks like an M10. And an infantry motorised uh, division combat command R. So fair way down the pecking order, I would say. So what we can do is once we've identified these units, we can go and see if we can find an artillery unit. Control. Okay, well, might as well go for the M10s, I think. One vehicle, that's a good win. Also, rather than going for the vehicles again, although that would be a good idea, I have this concept of sharing the joy around and trying to fatigue, uh, get the fatigue rate going with the opposition units. So instead of just banging uh, the M10s twice, we'll give the infantry some love. OK, 
Okay, we have another infantry unit, uh, another artillery unit here. And we'll give this guy here a go. So after giving those guys a bit of love, we'll, we'll uh, move our recon unit around. You always have the risk that you won't find any other units on your uh, subsequent tour. Now we've got to move across a stream here which is going to be quite expensive. Right, so I've identified this unit here. So a bit of an expansion of that idea of your reconnaissance unit. As you bump around the place, if you have artillery or air support, uh, consider using them in that sort of role. So I don't want this video to go too much longer because it'll get too big to upload to YouTube, but I hope you found something of interest in the concept of uh, map reading and movement. So good luck out there. Make sure you use that hide units button, toggle units, and get all sorts of useful information. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.